So hair is very important. So if you're missing hair on the outside of your body, then that means you're missing hair where? And we're gonna prove that the hair is the way you scan your environment. So we gotta make sure that we pay attention to our hair. And that's why non eat the hair is important. That's why our hair grows towards the sun. That's where we get the Bantu locks from. We lock in that energy in. That's why black people must have their hair. Our hair was very religious. Our hair was very spiritual and very, very ancient, y'all. It really was. Like it was a whole ritual with our hair. We used to lay down and get our hair washed with juices and berries. Put a couple strawberries in there, boo. You know what I'm saying? Like, like hair is sacred because that's the only way you can decode and scan your environment. Because I'm showing y'all that the skin and the brain is the same thing and through the hair of the skin and the brain, this is how you scan your environment and you download all the information in your environment and this have everything to do with why you sick. So my skin is a part of my brain. I need to make sure I ain't rubbing no lotion in there. You know, y'all, let me get the lotion. You, supposed, you gotta get, and look, the skin is so powerful and it absorbs. Think about all the chemicals, the perfumes, the cologne, all of the, the moisturizer that you're putting in your skin is made with all these chemicals. You are literally, when you taint your skin, since your skin is made from the same cells of your brain, you're tainting what? Your brain. A lot of y'all be in school taking tests, wondering why you can't think straight because you got a whole thing of Vaseline on. You your brain can't breathe. You done clogged your whole brain up because you done put all the oil on your skin. I know that's funny, but that's some true stuff though. Think about it. Your skin is the largest organism. The skin is the largest thing on your body. It's the largest organ on your body. Not only is it excitatory, meaning it produces things like sweats and stuff like sweat and stuff like that, but it absorbs things as well. So we got to be very, very careful about what we put in our skin. And if your skin is messed up, something is wrong with what? Y'all know what this is called? Holistic healing proteins. Again, I do not like the name protein, so we're going to call it simple amino acid structures. Can y'all say that? Simple amino acid structures. Y'all can't understand that you're vegan and you're plant-based, but I got one question. Where do you get your protein? Well, I'll be one of those. Hey, look, if nothing irritates me the most is that question, y'all. I'm telling y'all. That ir man, that drive me up a wall. Because it's like, man, it's, it's 2020 now. We should be already knowing that protein is not good for us. A neurotransmitter is impulses of electrical content activity that shoots inside of your body that connects a certain part of your body with the other one. So say you need to walk. Guess what your brain going to do? Your brain is going to send messengers down to all the different cells inside of your leg because the body is made of cells, nerve and lymph. All right. So the nerves is what communicates and commands the cells of the body. The lymphatic system is what cleanses the cells of the body. And the blood is what feeds the phytonutrients and oxygen to the cells of the body. So when you have melanin neurotransmitters, the melanin neurotransmitter, it runs throughout the body and it commands the body to do certain things. Like how I'm walking around, this is instant, instant commands. It's telling my legs to move, so I'm moving. So it said that these melanin neurotransmitters are actually connected to the membrane receptors. So the skin or the hair scans the environment, then it gets the signal. The signal then tells the melanin neurotransmitter what to do with the body. So this shows you that the environment, how you receive your environment is actually what act out your movement. Your environment is what's instructing you to do your movement. Your environment is what instructing you to think. How your environment is, is how it molds your thinking. So if your environment is the ghetto, the projects, cockroaches, I grew up around a lot of those. Used to bring them to school all the time. Ask my mama. We grew up around a lot of roaches. But you see what I'm saying? This have a psychological process on you that you growing up in a suburb somewhere. You got dropped off at school. You didn't have to ride on the bus. All these different variations of your environment is what molds and shape your personality. Your personality actually comes from your environment. Y'all get that? Just think about it. And this is how you know that culture shows and manifests through the body. If somebody walked in here right now with all red on with their right pants leg pulled up with a red rag hanging out their left pocket, they're a what? They're a gangbanger. Did they have to tell you that? No, because they, they express the environment through them, through their clothing. And that's why we have to change our clothes. They have to be more cultural. That way we can start speaking. I shouldn't have to open my mouth for you to know who I am. I bought me a beautiful garment too, an African garment. It just got messed up and all that, so I couldn't wear it. But I was gonna be fly on here today. I was super, I was gonna be real fly. Straight up. So my step might not be, you know, it's, it's, I was gonna be out, you know what I'm saying? So it might not be as cool today, because I ain't got my African garment on. And showing you that clothes are psychological. Have you ever put on a button down or a suit and you just felt like money? 
Showing you that everything about you is spiritual and psychological because all that is matter is mind. Mind is what creates matter. The reason why you exist is because you consciousness, you mind, wanted to experience creation, so you created a body to do so. That's all we're doing. All right, let's keep going, next slide. All right, now this shows you the hair follicle anatomy, and what I just wanted to show y'all is this right here. Y'all see the blood, the nerves, and y'all see that the nervous system is actually connected to the hair follicle, and then the hair comes out the, ep uh, the epidermal layer of the skin and scan the environment. So I know this is gonna hurt you ladies, but what about y'all shaving? Shaving your legs, shaving your cooter mama, shaving everything, shaving your armpits. I even see some of y'all pick the hair out of y'all noses. Y'all ain't scanning nothing. <laughs> like straight up, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If the Most High intended on y'all to shave all of y'all hair off y'all body parts, he would have. y'all would have been born with razor fingernails and y'all can just do this. For real, I mean, like when you start looking at creation and you start looking into nature to teach you everything that you need, you was born with. You see that? Just like a hyena was born with canines to rip the meat off the bones. It was born with claws to rip the meat off, then the flesh off the bones. You weren't born with claws, you were born with fingernails. You were born with fingers to peel back fruits, to peel an uh, uh, orange, to peel a banana. See that? You was born, you was born with regular teeth, for you can grind up your vegetables, for you can grind up your food. So based off your physiology, it shows you, and looking into nature, it shows you what you're supposed to be doing with your body parts. So according to body parts and being born with the ligaments and fingers and everything that we got, can you shave your hair off your body with just the things that you came into this earth with? So why in the hell are you shaving all the hair off your body when we finding out how important hair is? You got black men that actually think they don't even want to have sexual engagements if you, if you ain't shaved. I got a four-year-old baby. I don't want that to look like my four-year-old baby. Right. See what I'm saying? So, so we are even being taught how to look at sexuality. We are even being taught how to look at somebody and be attractive to them. You see a woman with her on her legs, you oh, she manly, she too masculine. Why? Because she's going through her natural evolutionary process. See what I'm saying? So we gotta really start redefining what health is. And health is nature. Nature is life, true classroom. Next slide. All right, sensory receptors in the skin. See that? And the one I want to talk about today, because this is off another one, I want to talk about the Merkel disc. The Merkel disc is some of the most powerful sensors in your skin. And these are all receivers or what we call sensory receptors. Notice all the ones you got. Y'all can write these down, but I want to focus on this one for the time of this lecture. So write that down, Merkel's disc. This stuff really exists. Your skin is straight scanning the environment and it's downloading information from its environment and you acting it out. And you acting it out through the Merkel's disc. Let me know once y'all got that down, we'll switch to the next slide. Let me get my water. Either one, it don't matter, son, I'm thirsty. Let me know once y'all done. Ain't that crazy though? You straight, like you are a walking television. Y'all got that? Merkel's disc. And I'm finna explain it in the next slide. I just need y'all to write it down. All right, so the Merkel's disc is actually a receptor that is in your skin and a hair follicle sits on top of it. The hair scans the environment and gets the impression, whether it's temperature or they call it a, a thermal receptor, whether it's pressure from the environment, whether it's a fight or flight from the environment, it actually reads that code, it goes through an amino acid process and then it tells the brain whether to grow in the environment or it tells the brain whether to actually protect itself. So it's only two options that the cell is gonna do once the skin actually scans the environment. It's either going to go through cellular reproduction or cellular growth or cellular protection. It cannot do them both. All right. Now, have you ever heard of fight or flight? That's what you call cellular protection. Can you grow while being in fight or flight? If you was running after a tiger or a lion or bear, is you worried about reproducing? Is you worried about how your clothes look? Is you worried about scoring an A on the test or not? Is you worried about growing? Is you worried about pituitary functioning? Hell no, you're trying to get away from the lion and tiger and bear. You in state of fight or flight. So guess what your body's gonna do? It's gonna produce something called cortisol. What role does your hair, you know, locks? What role do they play on this spiritual journey? 
another great question because um you got to understand the purpose of our hair you know what is the what is the the function of our hair right your hair is an extension of your nervous system okay you know it grows out of your scalp right your crown chakra your scalp so what's happening is your hair connects you to the most high the universe right they're like antennas they receive information from your immediate environment they receive information from the cosmos from you know the sun it picks up all that right and it's stored in your hair your hair is attached to nerves in your head those nerves are directly above your brain right so your hair gives your brain you know instant information right you know you have pores in your head so your hair protects you it protects those those portals those pores from any type of energies infecting you coming inside of you and possessing you you know it has to go through that hair your hair is alive despite what people tell you your hair is dead no your hair is alive right especially you know for the dreadlocks you know they they're curly you know like like the dna strand you know they curl right they spiral so you know your hair if someone takes a strand of your hair they can tell everything that's in your system you know they can tell who you are right your dna is in that hair it's information your hair holds information you know on a spiritual level man it makes you more intuitive because like i said it gives you information about your environment you pick up energy your hair picks up energy you know this is why like i have locks i've had my locks for 10 years now and you know when i first got them when i first started my locks it was more for just you know trying something new something different and you know the longer they grew like it started to change me you know my thoughts were just more more conscious i became a lot more calmer um you know i feel like my hair grew with me you know the length of my hair kind of told you know the the experience that i had in my life and as i grew my hair grew right your hair holds memories so you know it, it was a special kind of a special connection you know that i have with my hair and you know people will say oh it's just hair no your hair is very important man your hair is to you like leaves are to a tree right it picks up all kinds of energy all types of energy they're like satellites and for the fellas who don't have hair you know that's why they grow the beards the beards it picks up energy as well like it's hair your hair it has a purpose it's not just nothing on your body is just there by chance everything has a purpose everything has a function you feel what i'm saying you know the, the fellas with the hair the beards or whatever you see the, some cultures that they, they they find it a sin to cut your beard you know the beard makes you more intuitive it makes you wise that's why when you see someone with beards long beards you perceive them as wise right that's not by coincidence because you pick up information from this realm and the spiritual realm you're able to receive those signals those codes you know you out in the sun you're picking up all that information from the sun you're getting that vitamin d your hair absorbs that a lot faster your thoughts are a lot quicker you're able to process thoughts and think at a higher rate than someone with no hair because you have all this electricity your hair is alive man it it's like a processor like i said it's an extension of your nervous system so you got all this electricity you know stimulating your thoughts you're picking up all these different thoughts and information from from the space that's around you and from the cosmos so it makes you a lot more a lot more wittier with your thoughts so man your hair is very important very very important and i think someone left a comment they made a very great point and they said that you know when you release you start to have hair loss 
because you're weakening your chakra, your crown chakra. But when you hold on, your hair starts to grow back thicker because your, your chakra is being activated again. You're powered up, your crown chakra. So this is why when you do release, you, you start to lose your hair because you're weakening those chakras, man. So, you know, your hair is very important. Even in stories in the Bible talk about the locks and the hair, the importance of it with Samson and Delilah. When Samson, he released, he got weak and Delilah cut his locks and he lost power. He got weaker. You know, even we, we used to make jokes about this too. Like when like certain rappers or certain like athletes cut their hair, it seemed like they get, they get worse or they lose their that extra oomph in their performance. You know, and I, I think that that's a lot of truth to that. Your hair, it just gives you that that extra oomph. I know when I walk around, man, people people are drawn into my, my locks, right? Because it's energetic. It pulls people in. It's, it's like a gravitational pull. When people are around me, my, my hair is pulling them in. It has a very strong presence, a very strong aura. You know, in the prehistoric days when you had the tribes and they had the long dreadlocks, they, it would protect them from predators. You know, the predators will be afraid of the of the locks hanging down because their hair, it holds aura. It has a strong aura attached to it. And animals can feel that presence, you know, so they don't want no parts of that. <laughs> Your hair, it protects you from aging as well. This is why... You know, it's, you got so much energy beating down on you. This is why you get the gray hairs, because your hair is taking the fall for all that, all that deterioration that's going on in your body. The hair, it, it, it takes that aging from you, so you still look young. This is why you see guys who look young in the face, but they have a head full of gray hair, right? Because your hair, it protects you. It slows down your aging process. So man, yeah, man, it, there's a lot of benefits for your hair. You know, your hair, it's, it gives you intuition, it gives you wisdom, it gives you connection. You realize when you grow your hair out, you just feel a lot more confident, you're a lot more calmer because it's, it's, it protects you. It puts a certain aura around you, a light around you that, that just gives you that, that shield from any type of danger. So the dreads, the hair, they're very powerful spiritually, you know, physically as well. And on a mental level, they help you out, you know, on all levels. So, you know, that's just the importance of your hair. Uh